Hi, I'm Wayne Tuttle, and welcome to Chasing Legends. Okay, welcome back, Chasing Legends, this week. Um, we're going to be talking about a little something different, but first, let's say you go down and subscribe to our channel, you leave a comment, you hit the notifications bell, and that'll let you know when the next videos are up, if you enjoy our videos. If you don't, still watch. It's, it's, it's there. And by the way, pick up some shirts. We've got the gray and the black and the short and long sleeve Dutch Hunter Rendezvous and the Legend of Superstition Mountains, so keep everything there. Um... Next series of videos and things I want to do is kind of keep things documented, factual, and some of the kind of stuff that is misperceived. Now, one of the things that gets kind of sometimes a little blown out of proportion is the deaths in the Superstition Mountains. Um, little known fact, about 12 people a year die at the Grand Canyon. Uh, more people die at the Grand Canyon because of falls. Um, most national parks, actually the number one cause I think most of the time is drownings go figure. Number two would be falls because people fall a lot and they fall to their deaths. Happens a lot. And the superstitions, again, principally, primarily, and I'd say probably 90 to 95% of the deaths are probably either heat related, heat exhaustion, or falls recreation. It's not prospecting. It's not treasure hunting. It has nothing to do with that stuff. In fact, since the time of the guys up in Utah and Jesse Cape and back before probably 2010, 2013, since then, I don't know of any deaths in the mountains from treasure hunters, fortune hunters, or, you know, lost mine seekers and so forth. Uh, most of it is recreational. Um, and one of the problems is it's, it's a wilderness area and there's a state park and there's all kinds of things to do there. And believe it or not, what's kind of not always commonly known, a number of the skeletal remains have been found have been near Lost Dutchman State Park. Because people go out there, they're taking a trip, maybe they're off by themselves, and heat exhaustion, heat stroke, heart attack, could be you know anything like that, and they die, and nobody knows they're there, and some guy's off wandering around, and he finds the body, and so forth. So two of the primary spots in the mountains that um, they find a lot of skeletal remains over the years, um, which is pretty well documented, would be around First Water, which is one of the more popular trailheads going out to Garden Valley and so forth, a very easy area, and Lost Dutchman State Park. Not probably something they want to put on a brochure to promote, but hey, there you go. But um, I myself have run into a lot of people, just um, couples, people that live in the area, Apache Junction, Mesa, so forth, going out using the hiking trails, their diabetes, um, the heart, some sort of ailment catches up to them, and they have to be evacuated out. So generally, most of the time, we're looking at recreational stuff. And, and definitely in the last 20, 30 years, the murders and the mysterious deaths have like definitely lessened. But there are still occasionally odd things that happen in the mountains, and people go missing, and things happen. People get off the trail and so forth. But most of this has nothing to do with the Lost Dutchman Mine. In fact, there's people going to Zion National Park, you don't hear them screaming about that. You don't hear... In fact, I think as, you know, the, what the guy, people are hurt and all the stuff that happened with Forrest Fenn's treasure, there should have been more issue made of that than the superstitions. But we have our people out there, and you have your haters, and you have your people that want to push stuff out. So most of this all happens recreationally, which is, again, if it's June through mid-late September, don't go back in the mountains. You come out here, it's 110 degrees. It's not great to go out and start a hike at 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't care how much water you have. And that's usually a mistake. It's people from out of state, out of town, people from somewhere else. They come in, they're unfamiliar with the mountains, they're unfamiliar with the desert. And they go out and they decide to take this hiking trip. And two of the prominent um, things that have happened since we did, or not since, but just before Legend of the Superstition Mountains in the last 20 years, was Jesse Capens, bellhop from, um, I believe he was up in Denver, Denver, Colorado. And Jesse had come down, parked his Jeep at the Tortilla Trailhead, and he came in, set up a campsite and everything, and he was going to find the Lost Dutchman mine. There was a lot of stuff put in the papers. Um, he had read over 100 books on the Lost Dutchman, which I don't know if there's, if, if you even count the fictional books, I don't know if there's 100, so... 
And I think there's about 25, 30 books, maybe 40 books out there. And half of that is hard to come by because a lot of you have looked for them and said, wow, I got on Amazon. I can't even find that book. So they kind of, he was supposedly an outdoorsy guy and all this stuff. Um, having been out there when the search was conducted and a lot of stuff and saw the photographs of the tent and the gear he brought, um, he must have brought four or five cases of Gatorade. Um, I wasn't sure, you know, you're not sure, you, you know, his mom was in contact with a lot of us who um, did the search and tried to find him, and we felt really bad. I mean, she, she kind of felt like he should have been fine and done all right out there. I don't know if he was a desert rat and definitely, you know, going out there and I don't know what maps he might have had or how familiar he really thought he was with the area. But he was out at Tortilla, set up a camp, wasn't far from his Jeep, and they ended up finding his body probably, I think it was two or three years later, on Tortilla Mountain. Now, one of the asides on this was someone um, who was kind of well-known sat down with me and when we were going out there was a grid searches and I know Randy Wright, myself, Jim Hatt, a number of people were involved and um, with a superstition search and rescue, um, Robert Cooper and that group and those guys do a great job, you know, and they, I believe it was Cooper's group that eventually located Capon's body. But we were out there and this one individual who's an expert and he tells people, and people sometimes believe he's an expert, he, he sat down with me and said he had tracked Jesse and he would tracked him up into Peter's Mesa and around the backside and he was, you know, he thinks he was heading down to Pistol Canyon and all. But this guy believed the Lost Dutchman was up on Peter's Mesa. So he had this whole thing worked out where he'd found actually telltale stuff and he turned it over to them. Jesse was found, um, he had taken a fall off a Tortilla Mountain about a half mile, mile from um, his Jeep. So, um, not quite the same. I don't know. Uh, but that stuff happens. And that's why I always say, you know, it's great to lend a hand. I hate the professional experts that always sometimes come out and do that stuff because what you're doing is you're just looking for something out there and trying to help and trying to help a family. And sometimes these guys get in there and over exaggerate and they come up with stories and stuff. And that was a very sad thing because. Um, a lot of us heard from his mother, and she would email and so forth. And, and we put a lot of effort into it, and then it just got to the point we just couldn't figure it out. Um, and he turned out to be much closer to the camp than we thought, but the way he had fallen, we were able to locate him. Um, the other one was the three gentlemen from um, Utah. That was Curtis Merriworth, Charles, I um, can't read my own handwriting, and Malcolm Meeks. But they came down from Utah, and this was an interesting one because Curtis Merriworth had come down, I believe, before, a year before, and got lost out by Yellow Mountain. And he had to call on a cell phone and get someone to come in and, and extricate him out. So he got brought out, and they came back a year later, and he brought these other two guys. I don't mean to laugh, but he came back. Um, went out, and when that was going on, and there was a lot of kind of stuff stirred up and made up about that, and a lot going on. So these guys just sat down um, out there in the mountains. <laughs> Dog is moving the light. Sit. Moving everything. Okay, we're gonna have to. Jack, sit. Okay, stay. No, get out. Get out. Get out. You, you, you why go back the way you went? Really? You could have just came out this way. Now you have to go <laughs> out. Go, you be gone. I think it's Charles Ardizo and Malcolm East. But anyways, Curtis Curtis Merworth can start it from here. Curtis Merworth had been out there a year before, and when we went out to help, and they gave us maps. So they had the helicopter coming in and out of First Water, and they were flying over the area and looking for them. And Greg Davis had contacted me. I talked to Jack Carlson. They had everybody come out, and they would give us gave us copies of the maps these guys had. They had a couple hand drawn maps with arrows on them and stuff. And they would say, "Go this way," and then they have other arrows saying, "Do not go this way." And we were trying to make heads and tails of these things. And uh, we were out there, and everything going on. And finally, Rick Gwynn was at the rendezvous. Short time afterwards. And Rick actually kind of thought he understood the map or something about it, something, you know. He thought he kind of knew where they might be. And Rick's hips were really bad at the time. Um, by the way, as a side note, um, get well, Rick. Man, I know you're back in the hospital again and get yourself well here soon. But uh, 
Rick went up on Yellow Mountain and kind of worked his way down in this open area on these big rocks. Um, Rick found two of the bodies. So um, Rick located them, photographed everything, came down. He actually was in such bad shape um, coming down out of there. He actually had to spend a night before he came out. Later they went back in. He even said when they brought him in with the helicopter, he had a hard time identifying the bodies. It was on a black, the black volcanic rock though, out in the wide open. And kind of one of the strangest pictures I'd ever seen. They had an umbrella and like a lantern and stuff and just sitting there. It was like they were just sitting there on the rocks and they died. Um, Rick always felt there was a lot of funny business with possibly how they died. They found Curtis Merriworth down in the canyon going the wrong direction um, later. So um, no one knows what happened with that. Um, it was three guys that probably had no business out there, but they really thought they were going to find it. Again, I think it was Curtis's mother was on that and big on that. But um, And I don't know how old she was, but I'm pretty sure it was his mother that we heard from. Anyways, he was 67. Um, Charles artisan or whatever his name was 62 and, and Malcolm Meeks was 51 so they were kind of older definitely and they went out in the heat of the summer it was July so it was it was definitely the wrong time especially for them um, and a lot of the circumstances so you know I wanted to kind of put a couple of those up there and talk a bit more and go into the 80s and the 90s with you guys in future ones here but I wanted to kind of get into that to kind of put these lessons out there for people to understand is when you come out do yourself a favor, contact someone, you know, it can be someone like myself, Frank, someone from the museum or someplace. And a lot of times we'll try to talk you out at the wrong time of the year. And another great thing to do is if you come out that first time, go hieroglyphics, go first water to Garden Valley, do something easy, kind of get get a feel for it and stuff. You might find it's just not for you. You might get in, get in and say, wow, this is way much more than I, I, I I'm taking, I'm not going to take a bite out of this. I'm done with this. So it, it's best to kind of start the baby steps and go into it. Don't full blown and just grab everything and take your family out there. There's a, there's a few people I know are good people and don't risk it. And those people will tell you, and I'll tell some stories in the next episode about people before they've went in that I've definitely tried to put a stop to said hey you know what don't do that you know um, come on back you know so but um, thank you for joining us we kind of ran through everything here and kind of developing this and for the next few episodes I kind of want to touch base with all this is we're in the definite season but we're working towards the warmer season and we don't want people to be out there to be safe definitely all right so thanks for joining us I'm Wayne Tuttle this is Chasing Legends until the next time take care